Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. And I get a lot of emails from fro readers saying that they don't like the quality of the pictures they're getting out of their cameras. Now recently, I got an email from a guy named Joseph who has a D500, was shooting a basketball game, and said that there was too much noise or grain in the image, and he thought that it was a camera issue, or maybe his settings were wrong. So this seems to be one of the things that happens a lot. A lot of times people think that because they see noise or grain, that there's an issue with the camera. Well then, when most of the time, it's really the settings that were being used. So I wanna use this video to help you understand how to shoot in low light situations, particularly this one indoor shooting basketball so that you can freeze the action with the proper exposure and not have to worry about noise or grain. Now before I turn around and show you the image that he sent me, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. So here we go. This is the image that Joseph sent me. Now, it really doesn't look that bad at first look. And when you zoom in, you can go, yeah, you know, it's grainy, it's not really sharp or in focus, which was really what he wanted to do. And it may be more focused down here, so he may have had the wrong focus setting. But I wanna focus on, not saying focus so much, but getting the proper exposure right off the rip. I sent him an email back and said, okay, how far did you bring this back in Lightroom if you're not happy with the exposure? And what he told me is that he brought it back three stops. Now that's the thing guys, anytime you start to expand your exposure by multiple stops, you're off by that many uh, your exposure is off that bad, you're gonna start to bring out imperfections in the image. Even though when I look at this at 2000 ISO, it's not really that bad, but then I asked him for more information and asked him to send me the raw file. I asked him how he shot it and how he came to, to make this image because I wanna show you the raw file and read to you what he said. And then I wanna help you build this exposure. This is at 1 800th of a second at f2.8 on ISO 2000 with a 70 to 200. Sounds like it's good, but when you look at the image that he took, and this is what comes out straight out of the camera, there's an issue. And, and my answer back to him was, well, didn't you look at the back of the screen to see that your exposure was this far off and you should have done something about it? And to be honest with you, the three stops being that it missed 300, uh, three stops, it's not that bad, but let me read to you what he wrote me. Hey Jared, when I got to the school, I had, it had really crappy lighting and I wanted to freeze the action. I was unable to use flash at a bas as basketball players do not like getting flash in the face. Well, yeah, you don't need to use flash out there in the, in the game. You, you won't find anybody using direct on-camera flash ever at a basketball game, especially sporting events. It just doesn't work out. I should have maybe bounced the flash off the ceiling, but I thought it would be ineffective. Absolutely. A 50, 60 foot, a, a 40, 30 some foot ceiling, you're not bouncing a flash off of. It's not gonna work unless you had massive strobes, but that's a story for another day. Maybe if you have a suggestion, I do won't. Okay, we're gonna skip the whole flash thing. I use shutter priority, which is a mistake in my opinion, and set it to 1 800th of a second and started shooting. I was worried if I dropped my shutter below 1 800th, uh, to make a long story short, I had just gotten off of work, so on and so forth. Um, so basically what he's saying is that he set the camera to shutter priority and 1 800th of a second, which the mentality and thinking behind that is, is correct. You think you're going to freeze the motion at 1 800th of a second and you set it to 2000 ISO for whatever reason and you let the camera do the rest of the work because you did shutter priority. The problem is if you look at the back of the screen right when you're shooting, it's way too dark. In situations like this, I was taught a long time ago by an AP photographer named Rusty Kennedy that when I showed him bad photos that I took inside of a gym, he said to me, why are you in aperture priority? The light isn't changing, just set your exposure and stick with it because the light's not changing. So that's what I would do here. Now let me just go into the file and just go up three stops. We're gonna go up three stops and I wanna show you that I can edit this a little better than he did. Um, and show you that it is still usable. Just by pulling down here, I'm going up with the contrast, I've gone up here with the clarity, we're going up with that, I'm gonna pull out some yellow, boom, and that's just a quick edit. But it doesn't look that bad. Yes, it's not super sharp in the face. 
all right, you know, we, we want that to be better. That's probably a focusing issue, not a setting issue. But look, look how much better it looks by just getting the editing done, in my opinion, more correct. I wanted to say right. But so there you have it, right? That's what you have. But if you started right here and you look at the back of the screen and you know there's an issue right off the bat, I don't know why you would shoot this and not switch and set it manually. So what I want to do right now is build the exposure for you, help you figure out what the exposure could have been as a starting point in this situation. So we've got one eight hundredth of a second, 2.8 at 2000 ISO. We are three stops off, right? We know we need three, it's underexposed by three stops. Underexposed means you're not letting enough light in. Overexposed means you're letting too much light in. So we know we need to get three stops of light from somewhere, three stops for the exposure, to get the light that we need because we know it's off by three stops. So let's figure out where we could get these three stops of light. Well, if we look at shutter speed, we could get stops of light there. So let's go three stops. One four hundredth of a second is one stop. We have it again to one two hundredth of a second. And one more stop is one one hundredth of a second. Now the problem at one one hundredth of a second is that you know you're shooting sports action. You're not going to freeze action at one one hundredth of a second. So you would know that we don't want to get the exposure or one of our stops or three of our stops from there. So you have to figure out where else could you get stops of light. So moving back to here, we've got aperture at 2.8. We can't open that up any further, and I wouldn't recommend shooting sports at 1.4 or anything along those lines, so that's just going to stay at 2.8. Now let's look at three stops of light as it comes to ISO. So we double that one stop, gives us 4,000. Another stop is 8,000. Another stop is 16,000. And so if you're going to shoot at 8 or 16,000 with a crop sensor camera, you're going to introduce a lot of noise and grain naturally. So what could we do here to get a better exposure? I think I would not want to shoot less than one four hundredth of a second, right? So let me go to, a, let me get a fresh layer. Uh, actually, let me just delete, erase some of this stuff. Uh, okay, we got one eight hundredth of a second at 2.8 at 2000 ISO. I want to get to one four hundredth. Oops, I'm on the wrong thing. I want to get to, let me just rewrite this, one eight hundred. I want to get to one four hundredth of a second. We know it's going to be at 2.8 because we're not changing the aperture. So this is one stop, one stop right here. So that's one of three stops. We could double the ISO and by that go up one stop. That's two stops of light now. So we've just gotten two stops. We've gotten really close to the right exposure. Now I don't want to go up to 8,000. That could be, you could go to 8,000 but I want to try and help you keep the shutter speed as low as possible to get uh, less grain, not the shutter, the ISO less as possible so you don't get as much grain. Now this is what I personally would do. I would do this. I'd go to 1 500th of a second to make sure I'm going to freeze the action as best as I could at 2.8 and then I'm going to go at 5,000 ISO. Now you may be saying, Jared, you didn't get three stops of light back, but that's okay because we know we're shooting raw and we saw that three stops off was still able to come back. So this is what, what I call cheating the system. I like to cheat the system, meaning I underexpose slightly because I rather have a sharp image with a little more grain than a, a clean image with a not sharp image because of motion blur because the shutter speed was too slow. So I think 1 500th of a second at 2.8 at what I say 5000 ISO with that D500 would be perfect. And then if it's off slightly, you can just bring it back in post because you're within a stop to get it right. Does that all make sense everybody? So let me go back here. Um, this image, you would get something similar to this image. So I hope this all makes sense right here. This is what the point is. I wanted to bring the exposure to a place that you could understand. One five hundredth of a second is going to be great for freeze in action. 2.8, 
is the lens that they had, so they can't open it up anymore. 2.8 is fine, and 5,000 ISO in most cameras today would be fine, especially the D500. Now, if you don't have a D500, I have no problem with you going 1,500 at 2.8 at 4,000 ISO and underexposing by a stop and a half and bringing it back in post. You can do that. I, I have no doubt in my mind that most cameras are gonna be able to bring that back at this point. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. I got all my notes down, so I hope that makes sense. I like drawing these things out. I hope this helps you out. Like I said, if you didn't sign up for the Fronos Photo email list, look for the orange box over on the site. I'll send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations that's gonna help you out. And that's it, guys. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. To check out another good informative video about exposure and building the exposure triangle, go ahead and click up on the screen right now. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And go ahead, click on something. That video is really good. Or subscribe. Or hit a thumbs up. Or do all.